In this fast-paced world, where do love and patience fit in? In this video right here, I sat down with author Kim Sorrell. She shared her experience, strength, and hope on love, patience, and hope. Enjoy. You hear sometimes, um, I'm sure lots of people have, that love's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing that I discovered is love is not a two-way street. You know, if you uh, give love to get love, that's not love. You know, that's mm. like, I give you money, you give me a pair of jeans, that's a transaction, right? right? Love is not a transaction because you have zero control of the love that comes back to you. Zero control. You know, if you think about it, when you have a baby, you bring the baby home from the hospital, mm -hmm. you have total control. You decide when the baby eats, when the baby gets in the crib, when the baby has a bath, you know, when, when the baby gets a diaper change. But six, seven, eight months later, your Tupperware is all over your kitchen floor and pots and pans are banging everywhere. You realize you have lost all control and you will never get it back again. We have no control over anybody but ourselves. We only control ourselves. Okay. So when you give love to get love, which first of all is not love, but when you do that, you're setting yourself up for heartache, for disappointment, for loneliness, because whatever you're expecting to get in return it might not come back to you that way. And and that's where a lot of relationships, I think, end up getting hurt is we have these grand expectations on what we think our partner should do, where a family member should do, a friend should do. And, uh, and love has no expectations. Love just loves, period. So love is just love. So love don't even have a opposite. So basically what what you're saying, so you know, some people say opposite of love is hate. You saying love is just love. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Love is just love. And so, you know, I use this 2000 year old poem that you hear at a lot of weddings and whatever. Love is patient. Love is kind. Does not envy. Does not boast, et cetera. Yeah. And I took one word a month and there are 14 is an essence of love, by the way. So it took me a little longer than a year to get it done. But I took one a month and really focused on it. And every single one of those is unique and profound and incredible. And but then there's like an umbrella over it all. Like, you know, love is pretty cool. It's, it's complex, but the simplest thing in the whole wide world at the same time. Right. I know the story is off. Oh, love is patient. Love is patient. Love is patient. That That's what... Share your experience with the patient part. You know, like I said, I was yeah. listening to your book. <laughs> yeah, share with share with the listeners a little bit about that. Yeah, well, uh, love is patient. You know, I thought that'd be so easy, right? Very first month, love is patient. You know, we know what patience is. We're not honking our horn when we're stuck in traffic. We're not screaming because our six-year-old can't find his shoes and we're on our way out the door, right? Yeah. We're showing patience by not doing those things. Well, love that is patient is entirely different than that. And I believe you're supposed to love everybody. It is the best way to live. It's how we're supposed to live. Just love everybody. So you love whoever it is you're with. And showing love that is patient, you recognize that this moment is the most important moment of your life. This moment right here, right now. What's in the past is in the past. What's in the future is yet to come. This is the most important moment of your life. And so you need to be fully present, fully there in this important moment, in this moment, fully engaged, fully there. That is love that is patient. And I'll tell you, I stunk at this. I was so bad at it. I, I would be talking to somebody and thinking about a meeting I had later, what I needed to pick up from the grocery store, what I get. I get to <laughs> soccer practice, you know, whatever. And think that I'm fully engaged at the same time or be sitting there with my rebuttal ready, waiting for, you know, the person to take a breath so I can quick interject, whatever. Right. Well, when I started practicing this and it took me a long time to get it down, but when I did, it changed my life. Like if I would have stopped at month number one, mm -hmm. that would have been life changing because being fully engaged opened my ears. I hear things I never would have heard. Mm -hmm. And without making assumptions about what I think somebody's going to say, yeah. or based on some label that I put on somebody, which love has no labels. Love doesn't label people. You know, you're Vernon, I'm Kim. That's love. Yeah. So uh, be fully engaged. That is, that's love that is patient.
Give your all. Yeah, man, I'm glad you shared that because um, I have experienced that myself with that patient thing, right? And especially when it comes to my wife. And I always share this because my wife is so detailed, you know? So when I ask her what's going on, she gets, you know, get real detailed and I be going crazy. Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but one oh time, you God. know, I went to my sponsor. He said, you just have to be patient, patient, <laughs> right? And, and, he, and I sucked it up and I got through it, Kim. And when I got to the other side, she's like, wow, you know, that's why I love you. You know, you know what I'm saying? You you patient. But here's the here's the point. I began to listen and hear things that I usually don't hear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I mm -hmm. stayed right there and being patient. So there's a trial when it comes to being patient. And one thing I learned too, and you can help me out with this, you know, because you walk, you did this whole journey. When it comes to all those spiritual principles that each one you was practicing, kindness, um, um, goodness, all those things that you was was learning. When you pray for those things, don't it seem like you'd be tested a little more often? <laughs> you know, I, I was always afraid to pray for patients. I always thought, oh, my gosh, you know, then God will give it to me. So I don't know what I'll do with that. Right. But, uh, yeah, for sure, you get tested. But um, but getting tested makes you stronger. Yeah. So it, it's okay to get tested. It's all right. Okay. So because of that journey, what have the benefits have you gotten out of that so far? Well, gosh, I mean, my life has changed in so many ways. Like my relationships have changed the way I, I look at things. Like for instance, um, I deal with alcoholism in my family and, uh, and it's not easy always to deal with. And, uh, you know, it, it's, medically proven of course you either have the gene or you don't and praise the lord i don't have the gene but uh, my mom passed on the gene uh, certainly and i have cousins and and whoever and i love always hopes is is one of the one of the things in there love always hopes and uh love always protects i mean some of these things learning them i learned you know you you never give up hope on somebody ever. You never, never give up hope. You know, hopeless shouldn't be a word that we ever use because nobody's hopeless ever. You know, uh, th yeah. things can change for people. You don't give up hope. You love doesn't mean you enable, mm -hmm. right? Loving because mm -hmm. loving is not enabling, you know, like, like if you're in an abusive relationship and you're getting beat, you know, whatever, get out, you know, right. love, love doesn't stay wouldn't stay love would say the opposite it would say you know that that by staying you're enabling you're enabling yeah. the person to continue the behavior by yeah. leaving and loving them from a distance then they can face themselves because it's up to them because again you can't change anyone right. so you know i think with with addictions we want to change people you know yeah. people that don't have addictions don't understand it Right. entirely right so we think yeah. well why can't you just stop or why don't you just you know go to a program why don't you just do this why don't you just do that well i've had people in my life that that alcohol has taken such a hold on their lives that they get dry and then nod and back and forth and back and forth and and have passed away and the mm. first thing i think about when I hear somebody who has had a struggle like that, a deep struggle like that is, is I think, oh my gosh, they're finally in peace. They're finally in peace because it's a battle, you know, it's a battle. And for, for some, I think a greater battle than others, you know? Yeah. And so, um, but don't give up hope. Don't, right. you don't have to enable, you know, you can set boundaries and, mm -hmm. and love would do that, you know, set boundaries and, and whatever. But, um, but don't give up hope.